We do all kinds of things here at Word in Your Ear. Video casts like this. Podcasts like this. Crowdcast events with famous authors. Live quizzes. And we can guarantee to make your next birthday one you'll never forget. There's only one way to guarantee getting all of this, to getting it before anybody else, and that's to sign on to be a supporter on Patreon. Full details at this address. Word in your attic, a Zoom with a view. And we are delighted to be transported to, I think, East Hampton in Massachusetts and directly into the home of the great... Lloyd Cole, in fact, probably directly into the attic of the great Lloyd yeah. Cole. Are we, is it the attic? Yeah. This is the attic, yes. This is where I live most right. of the time. And that's clearly a recording studio. Uh, this half of the attic is the studio, the other half is the library. Oh, right. Very good. Very good. That's not, and how is, how is life out there at the moment? Odd, <sighs> yeah. I think. Um, in the last, other than going to the supermarkets, in the last six months, I've interacted with, I think, a total of nine and ten people. Oh, God. <laughs> How have well, you I'm been occupying your time? I'm taking the right. Presumably, soon. it's very creative. I don't, I don't want to die. Um, I don't want to make anybody else die. So, uh, I very fortunately, uh, we're able to play golf. Yeah, uh, all right. It's quite easy to distance, and, and we're also allowed to cycle. And I've got a bike path just about a quarter of a mile from our house, and it's wonderful. So, um, that's probably what I'm going to be doing after we uh, we finish talking. I'll probably run out for a ride. So, you, but, you, but you go on the golf course regularly. I've been golfing since my mum and dad took a job at a golf club in 1974. Right, right. But you can still do that there, because then they've closed have, them here, haven't they? I think. I think. They yeah, have. they've they've closed them. Uh, it, you know, the thing about America is it's not really one country. Dif different yeah. states have different restrictions. In Massachusetts, they let you play, but you're not supposed to touch the flagstick. Um, oh, right. Uh, you leave the flag in all the time. You're not supposed to rake the bunkers. You're not supposed to touch anything that other people might be touching. Uh -huh. And it's pretty easy to distance when you're playing golf. You don't need to be right up next to your mate. Keep six feet away is pretty easy. Now, for the benefit of uh, those of us who are non-golfers, there appeared to be something extraordinary happening in the golf world yesterday. I saw this extraordinary hole-in-one. Can you... Uh, do you see this? I did, yeah. It's not, not quite that extraordinary. In, in that those players are so good that, that that skipping across the water thing, most of them can do that. Oh, God, uh, no, fill me in. I missed out on this. So he, he, it, just... it, bounced, it bounced on water and then... Yeah, he did no, really skimmed it. Still... skimmed it across the water. It's more than yeah, that. Yeah, like the bouncing bomb. You know, that the... Uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Barnes Wallace. Barnes Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they, 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 they hit it with the bottom of the club on purpose. So it puts topspin on the ball instead of backspin. And it hops across the water and then it just fluked into the hole as as it does when the camera's on oh you're right okay well it, i was immensely impressed i couldn't so help it. <laughs> that's absolutely incredible yeah, yeah. so how well, long have you been living out there lloyd more than half my life oh right okay because you moved to greenwich village didn't you originally is that right um, um yeah yeah the west village yeah. west side um and um, Met my wife. We enjoyed living in New York. Had a kid. Had a second one. Didn't have great career opportunities at the end of the '90s, so we moved up here in the uh, 1999. Right, right. So you've got all your stuff there. So have you been spending a lot of time in during lockdown, just surrounded by your stuff, sorting through what you've got? I, I have actually, because uh, well, for the first couple of months of lockdown, I sort of didn't really know what I'm, I'm supposed to do. So I sort of twiddled my thumbs, tried to, did, did a bit of work on the new record. And then I had to do my taxes. And then doing my taxes, I thought, gosh, this isn't going to last if I don't <laughs> figure out some, some, some other income source. So I started looking around and I started a Patreon page. Um, it is now paying the mortgage and the most of the bills. Fantastic. Um, and... Um, People said, why don't you sell handwritten lyrics? And I thought, really? <sighs> well, I've been releasing them in batches of about 100 for $75 each, and they sell out in about a day. Oh, so that's keeping that's me fantastic. busy. 
I do about an, an hour and a half a day of that, as, more, as much as my old hands can So you're literally an hour and a half of sitting down and rewriting lyrics that you wrote maybe 25 years ago or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. How uh, amazing. Forest fire quite often. <laughs> yeah. That's extraordinary. That's, that's, it's that's, not, that's a brilliant that's idea. Not business idea. idea. But, but it is lovely that people are keeping me afloat. And actually, what is amazingly encouraging is before all this happened, the model for a musician like myself, who's, I don't know, you called the middle classes of the musicians. Uh, we, we had to tour an awful lot to stay afloat because we don't really make any money from selling records anymore. We might make a little bit of legacy money. We might get a bit of PRS here and there, but it's not really enough to make a living. So primarily our work is based around touring. And if this Patreon thing keeps going, my life would be quite different. I can tour when I want to. I might even go on tour with a band because I might be able to actually afford to do so again. Yeah, yeah. Because you were going to tour the UK, I think, next year, weren't you? Uh, it was supposed to be. We got shut down. Was it news? Maybe this year. In, yeah. in Gotham, we were out, we were in Gothenburg and getting ready to play a show uh, when the tour was shut down. That tour was supposed to continue to the UK. It was postponed to September, it's now being postponed to April. I don't think that's going to happen. I think, mm. I don't think really, I think it's probably going to be 2022 before we start touring again properly. Quite possibly, yeah. I'm, cer I'm certainly not going to go out. I mean, if the promoter said, you know, April's on, and I look at, if things haven't improved, I'm not going. Mm. Mm. There's no way I'm going into a theater every night if things haven't improved massively. Mm. No, well, that's understandable. So, what have you what have you dug out that you can show us? Have you got any uh, any old artifacts from uh, from your your youth? Or oh, right, okay, concert What's ticket. That? Hold it a bit nearer. School report. Oh, school report. Oh, school report. School report. Nice, we love, we love a school report. report. <laughs> Summer 1976. See me, could do better. Yeah. You're going to love this from Mr. Your. Hamilton. Lloyd has had a very successful year, and his examination results are very pleasing. If he maintains these standards next year, he will do well. However, he must guard against developing a too carefree attitude, particularly in his English. <laughs> ah, very That's good. good. That's very, very good. good. All right, what about this? That's prophetic. What's, what's this? Go on. Go on. April, quite possibly. Dear Floyd, I don't know where you are anymore. The press are driving wooden stakes into my feet. Every time I open a page, I discover some simple simpleton denouncing me. Am I expected to put up with this? Rough trade are hideous heathens. Enough is enough. Shakespeare's sister was blatantly blacklisted. One must have a heart of stone to hear that record and not shed a veil of tears. I don't know where you are anymore, murderously, Morrissey. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> That's fantastic. So explain what happened there. This is, do you do well, singles what, or something? Or we, we played the Dominion Theatre just after Perfect Skin had broken. Yeah. And we get backstage after the show and there he is sitting there. You're not supposed to be there. You say you never go out. Um, anyway, we became friendly. Um, uh, but he would change his phone number every couple of months. And I eventually just got tired of having to call his press agency do you have any number for Morrissey so I can get in touch with him? So I kind of drifted away. So that, that was his last letter, trying to find out where I was. I hadn't moved. I was still in the same place. He could have reached me. My, my phone number was still the same. That is so quintessentially Moz, isn't it? Every, is, isn't it? Every syllable of that could have always have you been written by one person. There's so much packed in, isn't there? Absolutely. You know, and, and you know how he got his signature like that? He used to write it with his wrong hand on purpose. All right. right. Yeah, Bob, Bob Dylan does that. Does he? Yeah, oh, Dave yeah. got Dave got a, a, one of his signs albums signed for my wife, and he signed it painstakingly with his left hand. Which is no, he's not left-handed. Yeah, yeah. no, amazing. I don't yeah. know. If there's a way to Barely cut it. Eligible. It's an anti-forgery measure or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. So you can't you can't forge his name on a check or something. I don't that's, know what the reason. Right. What the reason yeah. is? Oh, well, I'm very I'm very glad you got that on paper. It's far far better on paper. You see. It, it'll all be emailed in future, won't it? And it, it, it everybody will lost that. I suppose, right. I suppose yeah. Um, so most of these things I've unearthed because of the Patreon page. 
Right. I've, been, I've been taking photos, but that Morrissey thing, I didn't even know it was there until yesterday when I was just... Oh, really? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I have... Um, We're glad to be of service. <laughs> I do have a lovely copy of Meter's Murder, which uh, my son now has, which it just says, Dear Lloyd, treasure this. Right. Oh, you right. know, it's also perfectly Morrissey. Anyway, here's another one. Yeah. Uh, this is for a ticket to... No, I think from the bar at the El Macambo in Toronto. Oh, right. From uh, the where, where Elvis Costello recorded a very famous bootleg, didn't he? That's and right. The, the Stones. Live at the the Rolling, Rolling Stones, Love You Live, wasn't that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Camera, I think. yeah. And the partying with Margaret Trudeau and all that stuff, I think that was Yes. Good. From the group U2, ready to be heartbroken, what would it take to wipe the smiles from their faces before they went off to play the Enormodome? So that, Fantastic. <laughs> the little letter from Bono after they just they come to see us at the show, but they had to leave to play their own show. Just just to remind you of the uh, different status <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, that's Maybe lovely. So. Oh, that's great. All right. So I've got my favorite concert tickets, which I All also right. yeah. amazing. Uh, £4.50, 1978, New Bingley Hall, Stafford. Stafford. David Bowie. Wow. Oh, right. In 78? Did you say 78? Yeah, that was the tour that the, the stage record was made from. Oh, right. Fantastic. And the best two concerts I ever saw, amazingly, I have the tickets, both from the Apollo Theatre, 1980, Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band. Oh, wow. That was an amazing So That's 1980? Yeah, it would have been Doc at the radio station, I think. Right. So which... I'm trying which to think which lineup band was, was that. Was that the guys well, who were in Mallard? Was it around that era? Yeah, it probably was, wasn't I it? Think it was. I think it probably was. They, they were they were much more of a kind of groovy, bluesy rather than angular, needly type of beef art, uh, for, a magic band. They they were they were great. I mean, beef art walked on stage with a bottle of brandy and a harmonica, poured brandy over the harmonica, and they slammed into the first track. Uh, None of the records that I subsequently bought from the set list sounded as good as that band sounded. So that's the Glasgow Apollo. The Glasgow Apollo, which was uh, torn down in about, about 1990. Lots of amazing concerts there, though. And uh, the best one of all, this one. Go on. Oh, amazing. What year was that? Craftwork. It was, it was the Computer World Tour. Oh, they, that's a great record. And they took the studio out. That's an amazing record because it's 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 constructed with computers. It's almost entirely about computers, isn't it? Yes, and and not really not really constructed with computers because you couldn't really do music with computers in those days. So they were they were maybe talking about it. They maybe had their own system, but you know most of the drums and things it's all played by hand on that record. Oh really? Yeah, know. it's all play, It's almost all played. They didn't really get into sequencing until uh, the album after that. Uh, what's it called? The one, the one with the samples on. Uh, Trans Europe Express? No. No, the one. No, it's the oh, wait, from, man, man, man Machine. I don't know. Electric Cafe. That's uh, the yeah, one. Okay. That's when they started doing actual sequencing. So those are my those are my concert tickets. So the the Glasgow Apollo, if I remember right, I only went there once. Had the, one of the highest stages in Britain, didn't it? That I do not recall. What I do recall is when they played um, Autobahn the whole building shook. <laughs> it was a little bit frightening. <laughs> Did you see any of the shows? Well, actually, no, I suppose they were only in Europe, weren't they? Well, they came back a few years ago, about five or six years ago, and they were playing complete albums with the greatest hits package either side. No, I... I, I, I God, just it was was phenomenal. I wouldn't see one of those, but I, I did see them one at a time when they brought out uh, the uh, Tour de France soundtracks record. Yeah, uh, and they played. They played in New York. Uh, it was when I had a band called The Negatives, and we we went ensemble. We went. The whole band went out. It's the only time, you know. People talk about New York being some kind of melting pot of different uh, ethnicities and what have you. It isn't. But that was the only time I saw people from just all walks of life at the Kraftwerk concert. All the all the hip hop community were all there. Yes. Kind of the nerds like us were there. It was. Uh, it was. It was, it was really something. They were great. Yeah, yeah. Very good. What else have you got? Have you got any of the, the, the teenage singles or anything like that? 
I've got a couple of those in a minute. I've got the. Oh, go on, go, 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 give us go, the order you got. Yeah. Well, I, I, absolutely. Go, I've got the only time I think I ever went backstage at somebody else's concert. Oh, Nick Cave. Oh, okay. And yeah, we were mutual friends uh, when he when he was releasing The Good Son, I think. Yeah. And I, was, I, I just found this recently, and I just I thought it was quite amusing because Nick Nick was quite friendly. I, I tried to do a cover version of a, a song of his called The Ship Song, it didn't quite come off. But I remember when I went back, Nick invited. He said, "You've got to come back and say hello." So I came back, and you could have seen the look on the bad seat face. Like, what's this fucker doing here? We don't <laughs> want him in our dressing room. <laughs> I stayed for a couple of minutes and slunk off. <laughs> it's a special uh, awkwardness. They're a pretty backstage. hard mob, aren't they? Yes, the awkward yeah, squad. The, the bad seeds. My God. This is this. This might not immediately All make. All right, any go sense. on. But this is a set list from my first uh, solo tour. But that's not my handwriting. I recognise the handwriting because I have looked, the same handwriting on lots of cassettes that he made for me. This is a uh, this is Robert Quines, the guitar player. All right. right. He was one, he was one of my best friends in, in the city until he uh, he offed himself a few years ago. Oh, oh Lord. That's that's, yeah. So this is quite quite lovely, really. Yeah, very poignant. Yeah, absolutely. Was it? So, sorry, Robert Robert Quine. Yeah, is it was it Richard Hell and the Void or Voidoids? He was one of yeah. yes. Was he? Is that right? Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, and played with Lou Reed for quite a few right, years. Right. Okay. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay. This was the sleeve for the first solo record. All right. Yes. Right. And when I was going through my memorabilia, I found this, which I think was how I got the idea. So who's that? Oh right. I, who is that? I can't. It's quite Marilyn look. Monroe. Oh, it's the Bert Stern picture. Is that Bert yeah, Stern? Yeah, and it's from the session. She's and she's she's exited out with lipstick, saying, "Don't use that one." <laughs> the ends up on the cover of the so one Sunday Times. <laughs> that's great. So you you deliberately tried yes. to base that. That's brilliant. Oh, that's, very oh, that's good. good. We must get a picture of that. The artist. That, that's, that's, that's good to know. So that's a Monroe picture. I love stuff like that. Yeah, so do I. Your first album. That's brilliant. <laughs> This isn't from my childhood, but this is one of my most treasured. A real collector's item worth three pence, signed Paddy. Lions in my own garden, by Prefab Sprout, the oh, Indian. Yes. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah, Paddy MacLeod, yes. And oh, lovely. I asked Paddy if he might help me learn how to play that song one time, and he sent me the chord chart, which is here which is so much more complicated than any song I've ever written that there's no way I could possibly play it. But anyway, I still have that in mind. <laughs> let's, get to some, let's get to some singles. This is not the first single I ever bought. I think it's the third. Uh, T-Rex. T-Rex. Which one is it? This is Metal Guru. The first single I ever bought was Have You Seen Her by The Shy Lights. All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I sort of wish I could say the first single I ever bought was Telegram Sam, but it was the second. Telegram Sam, pretty much made by Tony Blackburn, wasn't it? Didn't he play it constantly on the radio? Am I right? Well, actually, it, I, th I don't think Telegram Sam, because T-Rex had already broken by then. Yeah. They'd already, oh, right. They'd already, yeah. Already had the hits with Get It On and Jeepster and what have that's, that's true. But they were already huge. But what Blackburn did with Metal Guru, which I've never heard before or since, was I still think one of the most awesome things ever. He played Metal Guru, which comes in at about one minute, 58 seconds, like a Buddy Holly song or something. He said, that's amazing. I'm going to play it again right now. And he did. <laughs> so he played the whole thing, then played the whole thing again. Played, played it again, yeah. He's like, this is great. I'm playing that again right now. I get the feeling that T-Rex are really back in vogue now, because the people who listened to them when they were young really, really loved them and, and, and are talking about them a lot. Whereas at the time, they were never really... It wasn't a kind of music press thing, was it? They never really got that kind of... Um, level of of, uh, of, uh, of approval well yeah some of them you know people like nick kent recognized they were good i mean the, yeah all the all the punk bands knew they were great yeah yeah you know? um but yeah i mean mark was a was a was a was a i think it was sort of a what's the word he was a, a savant really wasn't he? he 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 was i think he was accidentally brilliant a lot of the time um but he was unique and certainly for me the most important. I think Telegram Sound is, is maybe the best rock and roll I've ever heard. It's fantastic record. Cool. I think yeah. the one thing about T-Rex with the music press was that the music press had all been with them at Tyrannosaurus Rex. You know, they'd all, right. seen, them, yeah. they'd yeah. all seen them sitting on carpets 
you know, in student common rooms. That's and suddenly right. they were reemerged playing for, for girls. Or, you know, top yeah. of all sorties. And there was a kind of resentment among the music press that they... They uh, couldn't make that adjustment. They, they? <laughs> just, they no, was... I, think, I think you're absolutely right there. I mean, John Peel, especially. Yes. You know, Peel, Peel was, you know, best friends with him. And then he, and Peel later in life did actually acknowledge that he was wrong. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. These, these records were great in, in, in that he did the same thing with Rod Stewart. Um, and I remember, remember around about the punk time, Stewart released a, a record, something like Hot Legs or something. And I remember yeah, listening yeah. To Peel, and Peel played it, goes, you know what? This is really good. Didn't expect this. So, <laughs> uh, how about this? Oh, is that Buzz oh, Buzz Buzz Hooks, yes. Is what that lovely the first thing? Fantastic. This is the yeah, this is the first single from the first album when they were on Major Labour. United Artists. What? Yeah. How what? is that? While we're doing the trivia, is that designed by Malcolm Garrett? That it cover? absolutely is. Absolutely is. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I actually reached out to Malcolm Garrett uh, when I first designed a website for for design help. But he was already in the stratosphere in terms of how much he would get paid for doing design work. But he did. He was helpful to me in po- giving me some pointers. We're still we still chat on Twitter every now and again. Right, lovely right. guy. Yeah. Didn't he? Didn't he design New Sounds, New Styles magazine? He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he did. did. Yeah. And there was a magazine that came out, like a new romantic magazine, it was launched out in the offices of Smash Hits in about 1982 or whatever. But he did, he did that thing of, le- of of leaving the vowels out of his uh, out of his name, didn't he? Because we I, used to refer to him as Malcolm Gert. <laughs> That was that was the office joke. There's Milcom. Milcom of Groot. But it, he'd be pleased to know that we we remember. I remember Absolutely. the fact that he designed the Buzzcocks first uh, single. I probably yeah. quite a few other ones actually. Actually, on a major label. Yeah, go on. Carry on. I can't see. It's a bleaching out for me. Oh, oh the old only wonderful. ones. Is that yeah, another girl on another planet? And that, yeah, another girl on another planet. Funny to hear those lyrics now. I remember thinking they were fantastic at the time. They're not that they're not that wonderful, his lyrics, but there's just something about his vocal delivery. And there's something there about the, the way, the context of the music and the warmth and the colour of the sound that compensates. There, you, I, 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 I agree. He, he's, he, he, he gets away with stuff in the same way that Dylan does, in the way that Dylan will have a couple of rotten lines in almost every song, but he'll have a couple of amazing lines as well that'll, that'll, that'll make up for it. Yeah. And... And 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 he and he doesn't want to spend a whole week writing a song. Yeah, I think you know. Whereas somebody like Cohen will spend months to try and make, get rid of that one. Well, yeah, that's it. That's the way. Yeah. Leonard Cohen was a poet. That's why Bob Dylan's a songwriter. It's yeah, a different kind of thing. You know. Yeah, I always used to think that you had a a, a touch of Dylan about you. There's a line in uh, Perfect Skin which says uh, she's got cheekbones like geometry. And eyes like sin, which I always thought was a very Dylan-esque line. It's beautiful. I think I think I think I was trying to be, to be honest. Oh, were you? Okay. <laughs> I, I think we, we, Hands we, up. We, we, we thought of that song as being a sort of kind of homage to subterranean homesick blues or something. Oh right. Basi- which is which is which is basically showing off. It's basically like, look at what I can do and you should listen to us. You know, yeah. and which, which is basically what subterranean homesick blues is. Listen to what I can do. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I mean, if, I don't think I'm quite sure about it at the time, but we, yeah, we considered that song it's a great uh, one. as uh, to be a sort of a manifest. Um, yeah, Polydor, Polydor wanted to release Forest Fire as the first single, but we wouldn't let them. Uh, yeah, we said it's got to be this one. So we were occasionally right. <laughs> Absolutely. Go this on. Is this is brilliant. Oh, I can't say. Go on. Yeah, yeah it's Kiss. Prince. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. It's a single. Yeah. And so, you know, if, uh, if the 70s for me was T Rex and David Bowie, the 80s was Prince, really. Like, nobody right. really. I don't think there was anybody up there with, with Prince in the 80s. Uh, we were all sort of in his shadow. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever see him? <clears throat> I did. I saw him on this tour as well, and uh, which was the Black and White tour. Uh, and I thought that was the best one. I saw him. Also on the Love Sexy tour, and for some reason, Wendy from Prefab Sprout was was tweeting about this recently. When, when we went to see them on this tour, they all went to his after show party at the Kensington something or other, and and I let her borrow my sweater because I went back to bed. 
in the, at the, at the uh, Columbia Hotel. <laughs> I didn't go to the after party. I can't quite where, remember what. Now, wasn't that one that, where he, he, on that tour, whichever tour it was, he would do the show and then he would go and he'd play in a club. And I went and saw him in what was it? And I went to see him at Wembley, I think. It must have been Wembley. And then afterwards at the Camden Music Machine. Yeah. Yeah, he, he he would do that almost every and show. Almost every for night. hours, hours. Yes. Yeah, I know. And there uh, were literally two hours. Somebody wrote a book about it, a really really good book actually, which was reviewed all those after show concerts. You know, and I couldn't believe the, the just the energy of it. How could he possibly have done it? Astonishing. But also, yeah. they were they were strangely different from the actual shows. They were no, like they, wind down type things. Well, the yeah. one was that I went to. Yeah, lots of jams, more more yes. jazzy. More Right? Yeah, yeah, that's part. Yeah, uh, int very interesting. It's kind of tragic again, unfortunately. Absolutely. All right, a couple of couple of albums. Yeah, well, go on. Well, we don't really need this one, but I do think that this album, even Sober Shine, oh right, is, okay. is even better is even better than the uh, Another Girl, Another Part. Than the first it, one. It's a fantastic record. Yeah, it beautiful is. guitar parts in it. Oh, that's so. He's cool. he's he's nobody talks about him, John Perry. He was the first person, I think, to ever make a gay pass at me. Really? Yeah, we did. We did this thing for uh, for, for <laughs> international. If you're watching, role. John, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right. I, I, oh, yeah, I, didn't realize, I didn't realize at the time because I'm a very naive young person. In fact, I was so naive that we'd be we'd, we'd be out drinking after concerts, and we'd be sitting in bars and. I'd be saying to the rest of the band, this guy's a really nice guy. And they'd say, he's trying to sell you drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't take drugs. So I, 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 I just didn't, re <laughs> I didn't occur to me that that's why this guy's being so nice. He's trying to sell you drugs. Anyway, when we were, when we were at Polydor, uh, they had this, uh, their, their offices were just off Bond Street. The po it was a poly polygram building. So it was a Polydor phonogram. And there was a library that had all the releases in it. And at the time, all of the Scott Walker records were out of print. Oh, really? Yeah, they were all out of print. When, you remember when Julian Cope brought out that yeah, uh, yeah, copy yeah, of the Fire yeah, Escape yeah, to the Sky? Yeah. Well, so somebody told me about this library and said the Scott Walker records are probably in there. So it turned out you could climb out of the window in Polydor climb around the balcony and climb into the window <laughs> in through the window of the library. And I don't know, I was, I was up for it. So I, I, I nipped out of Polydor, ran, went into the library. There was nobody there. Took Scott one, two, three, and four. Took them home, tape copied them. And then next time I was in Polydor, I brought them back out the window in Polydor, <laughs> climbed into the window, <laughs> in through the window of the library. And this time the librarian was there. <laughs> I said, just, so those are overdue, Mr. Court. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, uh, yeah, that was uh, <laughs> so have you got a particular fondness for Scott Walker? I do, yeah. And, and the older I get, the, the more intense it gets. So, right. yeah. this is one of, the, well, it's one of the best looking records ever, I think. Scott yeah. Um, and and, and I, 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 as I get older, I, I sort of relate to the way his music developed. Has he got? older and maybe maybe the music seemed more difficult to outsiders. I remember when Tilt came out, I thought it was, wow, this is difficult to listen to. And then I listened to it again last year and it sounds like easy listening now. Really? It's just, yeah. Um, well, some of the stuff he put out towards the end was incredibly experimental, wasn't it? Yes, it was, it was. But or was that a deliberate attempt to distance himself from uh, my ship is coming in or whatever? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not even sure. I mean, I think that the only thing that he he, he really wanted to distance himself from was, uh, you know, when after I think after Scott Four hadn't really performed that well. I think he had he had his own TV show where he would sing. He did, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, it, and he would and, it, and he sort of reverted to type for a while, and I think he's quite embarrassed by that. I think, yeah. I think he, I think he's had. I think he's actually instigated the destruction of the tapes for, for, for those things. I wouldn't things. be surprised you don't see those uh, you anymore. Don't. Yeah, because there was a whole strand of, you know, if you were a solo singer at that time, 
and you didn't have an acoustic guitar, the BBC would pretty much, they, they, they'd likely come along and say, let's do six programmes where you yep. sing your own things. And then at the end, you'll have a guest and the two of you will sit on stools. Well, you duet. duet. Yeah. Dusty Springfield. Julie Felix. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, well, Tom Jones, obviously. Yeah, like and, Tom uh, Jones, yeah. Uh, Scott, yeah. Scott Walker, you know, I remember when those first solo albums came out, you know, that they were, they were salty. The people who bought those records are not a rock and roll crowd at all. You know, they, they, they were kind of, they were slightly older. There were a lot of people who were looking for a new Shirley Bassey record or something. And they, they loved the fact that it was lush orchestration and, and songs with plots and all that kind of thing. You know, so he, he, always, he always had that. That was his basis in 1968, 69. Uh, but it obviously became difficult for him when he got older because he, because he no longer wants to be associated with that. And no, he, and you know, I, I don't think, he, I, I, after Night Flights, which I think was 77, which is a, an, an, a strangely amazing record. You know the track, The Electrician? I mean, it's, it's maybe, maybe it's the most amazing track, but it's on this album that's got four terrible songs <laughs> by the, the other brother. Um, John. Not, yeah. Um, but his tracks, Night Flights and uh, The Ele Electrician, are amazing. And then he just disappeared until, I think, uh, Climate of Hunter was 84, because I think it came out around the same time as Rattlesnakes did. Yeah, yeah. And, and then he was, then he, you know, then he was fairly, he put out records every couple of years from then on. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm my favourite, probably my, eh, my favourite singer is Karen, Karen Dalton, but this is, this is probably my second favourite singer. Right, right. Yeah, good choice. Psychedelic for us, talk, talk, talk. This is a fantastic record, I think. Talking about wanting to sound like Dylan. Dumb waiters. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, you know, I also found out that um, um, he loves crosswords, and I think uh, I do too. I think if you like crosswords, it's helpful for lyric writing. Um, I ran into Butler in a uh, club in New York in maybe 89, and he's like, you ripped off my lyric. And I was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> the Price of Medicine. Which one? Uh, the Price of Medicine. Um, in President Gas, he sings It's Sick, The Price of Medicine, and I sing The Sickest Joke Was The that's, Price of the Medicine. That's right, that's right. That's got an homage. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The Go-Betweens, Liberty right. Bell, Black Diamond Express. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I think Robert was was kind of my role model of what, what I want, what I thought good a pop star should be. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and he's He's a lovely guy to boot. He is. He I, uh, is. I was very fortunate uh, when my second solo record came out. I asked Robert and Grant if they don't, the band had split up. I said, why don't you just come out and do acoustic duo with me? And they did. We put them, we put them in the hotels and on the bus with us. And I take responsibility. I take the credit for the, uh, re them being reunited when they did. Right. Uh, and this is, this, this is my favorite Go Between's record. Uh, looking at, it doesn't have that song that I thought was on it, huh? the Clark Sisters. Anyway, wonderful man, Robert. We had him on. We had him on this show, didn't we? Really, Dave? We did. we on, on the word in your, your ears. Amazing guy. He wrote a wonderful book about the kind of rules of rock and roll, didn't he? His analysis of uh, what life as a musician was like. Really good. Yeah, he, Carry he's, on. But, he's, yeah. he's 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 a he's a lovely person. But he, he's, he likes the doors. He likes the doors? Is that a sin? <laughs> it, it's, if you, it's okay to like the doors until you're 21. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, we can no longer be friends. That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, here's here's a, a nice rock critic thing. This record generally acknowledged as Bowie's best record by a lot of people. Um, you will you know this already, but 1976 to 77, Bowie, he made Low, Heroes, The Idiot, and Lost for Life in a period of a little bit more than a year. Just yeah. an absolutely astonishing. Yeah. astonishing. All four records are fantastic. But the trivia that I like to tell people when they're talking about rock critics is when 
the enemy came up with their list of best albums in 1977 this was number 50 <laughs> heroes was heroes was number one and it should be the other way around shouldn't it yeah, it is yeah. that is absolutely transformative that record. the second side of that record i remember hearing that for the first time just it has a, a tone and a, a tenor and a feeling like nothing else i'd ever heard incredible no uh, 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 and it, and you know it was rejected as the as the music for uh, the man who fell to earth no i didn't know that yeah, but, but uh, those those ideas were were Bowie's idea for the soundtrack for the Man Who Fell to Earth, and they were and they, they were rejected. God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, First time I heard that record properly was it was on a tape. Somebody was playing in the car, coming back down the M6 from some gig in Liverpool in the middle of the night, and I'm sure the M6 went right very near some huge cooling towers. Presumably it still does. I think it was the M6. And uh, looking at these cooling towers in the dark, listening to the second side of Lowy, the, oh, my God. This is... Yeah, it's an industrial <laughs> experience. It really yeah. was. You know? That's brilliant. Yeah. Incredible record. This is not an incredible... Oh, oh right, yes. No, no, pussy no, no pussy footing. It's no pussy footing. And ah, the... Frippatronics. Yeah, that's right. First, Very early kind of ambient music, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The, my first experience of electronic music, and I'm fairly sure I bought it because of the sleeve. Yeah. And because because I think Roxy music did exist at the time. Yeah. And I was a, I was a pretty big Roxy music fan. But yeah, this is my first electronic record. So, I, and I and I do still love it. There's something wonderful about it. And. Uh, just two tracks, and Eno doesn't play an instrument on this. He plays the Revox top tape machine, making the feedback. <laughs> that's why, you know, that's his, I think that's his credit here. <laughs> equipment, equipment, Gibson Les Paul, Frizzbox, VCS3 synthesizer with digital sequencer, modified Revox tape recorder. All right. No, that's a brilliant record. It's just still got the price on it. Oh wow! Yeah. How much? Come on! Yeah. How much? And it's from and it's from the record and tape exchange on Goldhawk Road. <laughs> I was just uh, around the corner from here. <laughs> yeah. Um, th this is the record that I learned to play guitar, playing along with. Right. Playing bass. I had. I, I. I was in the first band I was in. I played bass, and so I would just put this record on and sort of try and play along to it. I can't read the title. What's the What's the title? It's 1969 Live, The Velvet Underground. Oh, it's The Velvet Underground. Sorry, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, and I, I think that the best versions of a lot of their songs are on this. That version of Waiting for the Man is great. The, you know, the introduction where he's talking about the Texans. You, you know, you guys have a you have a curfew. Do you want us to play one set or two sets? You know, it's just he it reminded that there was there was a time when Lou Reed was charming. <laughs> Brief mode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very brief. This record was very important to me. Hot butter, Hot butter salt. salt. <laughs> Isaac Hayes. Isaac Hayes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and it's sort of a, a, a lesson in, 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 in how repetition can be amazing. You know, the beginning of the, the version of Why, By the Time I Get to Phoenix, just bam, just does the same thing for 10 minutes while he just talks. And then yeah. when, it, when it finally, when that chord finally changes, it's like an eruption. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, um, see, go on, to, carry on. I was going to say, I have to admit that when, that when before the commotion started, I was listening to this a little bit too much. And, and, and if you hear, if you hear the singing on some of the demos I made in my, in my home studio, I sound like I'm trying to sing in blackface or something. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> I can remember reading an interview with you in The Guardian and you said that when you started out, you wanted to be a male Aretha Franklin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wonderful. I did. I did. Yeah. Uh, I got one, one more. One more. Oh, good grief. It's a yeah, making, it's it's a making a, tray. It is. Yeah. Um, Somebody again. did make a quiche in it. I can remember it being published in the NME, didn't they? It had the PIL logo <laughs> on the pastry. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. This, 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 this record was, was very important to a lot of people our age, I think. My age, anyway. You know, we'd had, we'd had glam and we'd had punk. And then what's coming after punk? And, you know, 
the clash got worse and worse. And I thought Pill got sort of better and better. And, uh, and I remember them doing this uh, on the whistle test with Annie Nightingale introducing. And I don't think I've ever seen a, a TV presenter more excited about having a band on. on. I mean, she was just so excited that Pill were on the show. Um, I even actually got to see them. I, I, I went to one rock festival in my whole life. Oh, really? Yeah. Which one? Yeah. A man after my own heart. I've only yes. been to one. Uh, well, I went to one, and, 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 and when I got home, I, I, never, I said, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> Which was it? It was very interesting. It was Futurama in Leeds. Oh, right. It was, a, it was an indoor thing over two nights, but I had to go. The Bunnymen were playing, Joy Division were playing, and Pill played. So was that Queen's Hall, Leeds? No, it was some kind of exhibition centre. Kind of felt like a giant warehouse. There were two uh, stages. There was yeah. two stages. So one band would play on one stage, and then the next band would set up on the next, and blah, back and forth. Joy Division. I only saw them that one time, but um, I mean, I loved them. But the, the, there was a very odd, very dangerous atmosphere when they were on stage. It felt right. like there was there was a, a, this this undercurrent of. A potential violence, and very odd. It was quite. It's a little bit. Well, it was more than a little bit. It was frightening. Well, funnily enough, I was, I, I was only talking to Jar Wobble yesterday. That's my name drop. I, I I, I, I'm mates with him on Twitter. He's a he's a Spurs fan. Uh, uh, all right. So, uh, are you a Spurs fan? No, I'm a I'm a Chelsea fan for my sins. All right. Okay. Well, I was on the Spurs podcast with Jar Wobble yesterday. Extremely voluble, certainly on the subject of Spurs. Probably extremely voluble on loads of things. He was very good. Uh, he, he's great, isn't he? I, I, I finally plucked up the courage to ask him to play bass on my ne my next record. I, I, I'm hoping he, he said, "Why not?" So we'll see. Very Actually, good. David, I had another uh, recording yesterday with with a guy called Liam Newton, who's written a book about 10 CC, and he says that you've been enthusing about rediscovering 10 CC. Is that right? Yeah, Is, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, have, you, have, you, have you seen any of these these Twitter listening party things that people are doing? Yeah, he was talking about yeah, that, Tim yeah. Burgess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Tim did one for. Uh, um, well, we, I've done a couple with him, but he did one for the original soundtrack. Right. And I and, and I dug it out, and I went, oh gosh, this is this is this is better than I expected, uh, and some of it was better than I expected. Some of it was worse. Like one night in Paris. Mm, not as good as I remember, um, but it got me to listening to sheet music, which other than one track, which is the, the fake Calypso thing, everything yeah. else on that record is magnificent. It's and brilliant. I started, I started, I started, I found a, a live performance of them doing a BBC in concert thing. Yeah. From, from, it's fantastic. The, the, the old wild man. This is just the song I was about <laughs> to funny. mention. That's the one I've just mentioned. been listening to that the other day prior to the interview. And I thought, yeah, oh, yeah, my yeah. God, this is amazing. Old wild it, man. It's, it's astonishing, isn't it? You, 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 did you see the live version of it? No, no, I haven't. It really, no. it's worth checking out because they pull it off live. Um, Goldman plays guitar. Um, Lull plays gizmo. Um, and I think Eric playing guitar as well. And they, they had a drummer, the, the, an extra member of the band that used to yes. tour them. Who yeah. also, played, who also played keyboards. So he was lurking in the background playing with the keyboards. Yeah, just fantastic. Yeah, and so yeah, it's, it's, it's been it's been it's been nice. I actually I actually went and I and I bought Consequences for the first time a couple of a couple of months ago. Mm, maybe it's, not a good move, but, but it's still, <laughs> I still felt like I wanted I wanted to I wanted to give it a chance after all these yeah. years. So you're obviously a collector. You kind of you hang on to records and you you buy records and you know. No, no, not really. I mean, I did, and 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 in my in my transition moving from the uk to over here i lost a lot of them i think my brother's right. got vinyl uh but no you'd be in my vinyl collection would fit about there and it's, it's not it's not that much right uh, I, I don't have a record player anymore i do i do still buy cds though because i really don't like the idea of licensing something i, I like the idea that if i've bought something i can give it to my son yeah, no, yeah, cool. yeah, absolutely. A physical so, thing. Well, it's also the idea that it exists. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, yeah. And I'm, I'm a little, I feel, I mean, I understand the vinyl thing that's going on right now. It makes sense. But we, one of the ways that we stay alive is we have a, we have a web shop and we sell records and we sell merchandise and stuff. And 
vinyl is incredibly it's the opposite of green in terms of shipping it's so heavy you've got to pack it yeah. with so much stuff to make sure that it gets to the destination without being damaged it's really not green so i, I, I we, we try to sell vinyl as little as possible encourage and, and we encourage people to buy, buy vinyl from their local store yeah. Yeah. if you could yeah. buy vinyl please buy it locally because yeah, yeah. Uh, and so the only way that the, the, you know these that digital files do make make sense is that is that they are green they they don't, they don't need to be shipped. So uh, there is that. <clears throat> so it's so traditional on these we, things. We end. That's right. With, with, uh, with a nomination for the, for the greatest record ever made. So have you had yeah. a, any thoughts as to what your, your, uh, your suggestion for that would be? I, 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 I go back and forth between Highway 61 and this one. What's that? Hold that's that craft work. Oh, it's craft work record. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's right. the one we were talking about. It's computer C world. Computer world. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. So it would be it, all right. Choose it's, right now. It's computer world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Fine. That's fine. <laughs> they, 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 we've had all kinds of interesting nominations. All kinds of things. People coming from all different angles. That doesn't matter. It's just a choice. And you, you know, if, if it was, if it, it was, if it was an album. It, it, it isn't an album, but if it was, if it was, if it was a piece of music, I, I would have, I would pick music for eighteen musicians. That's probably my favourite piece of music, but it's not really an album, is it? Is now, that who, who's <laughs> that by? Is that John Adams or no, Steve, Steve Wright? Steve Wright. Right, yeah. Coates, right, okay, yeah, I'll know that. Yeah, it's the one that starts with the da, 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 da. going in and out of phase. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Very good, very good. Well, Computer World, a very good choice, as is Highway 61. And uh, anyway, there is no wrong answer. There's no so, wrong answer. Absolutely. Oh, Lloyd, it's been absolutely fantastic. It's hearing been terrific. Stuff. Really, well, really, really interesting stuff. Thanks for putting so much thought and effort into digging out all those things. It's wonderful. You're very welcome. I'm going to put them all away again. <laughs> yes, put them all away. Yeah. How's the weather with you out there today? You know, uh, we've had... A lovely Indian summer about the last seven or eight days. It's been magnificent. Uh, it's going to end this afternoon. So in a couple of minutes, I'm going to put the cycling gear on and get out and possibly have the last ride of the year. Okay. Well, of the year. That's a very pessimistic way. Yeah, well, no. My God, is it going to be that bad? It, it, it is. When, when, the, when the bad weather hits here, um, when the snow comes down, it stays on the ground for the rest of the winter. Really? Uh, so that, and that's the end of the golf then. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think there's a good chance that that, that we played the last I played yesterday. That's there's a good chance that was the last day. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, we'll uh, we'll hope to see you on the other side, as we say. Um, I do hope so. Yeah, and uh, yeah, be in touch. Okay, Lloyd, wonderful to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Lloyd. Yes. Fantastic. Word in your attic. A Zoom with a view.